In this video, I'll show you how to solve the Alex problem called designing a galvanic cell from two half reactions. In this problem, you'll be given two half reactions and they're both being written as reduction reactions. You're going to be asked to figure out which of them is actually the reduction reaction, which one is the oxidation. You'll write an overall balanced equation for the whole entire cell. And then last but not least, you're asked to calculate the voltage of the cell. Even though this is the last thing on the list, this is definitely the first thing that you need to do when you're solving this problem. And I'll explain why as we do it. So I'm actually going to scroll back up here. To calculate the voltage of the cell, we're going to use the equation E cell equals cathode minus anode. And also we're going to keep in mind that these reactions always produce a positive voltage or a positive E cell. So we need to take these two numbers right here and we need to plug them into this equation in such a way that we end up with a positive voltage. There will only be one correct way to do this. If we plug them in in the right way, they'll give us a positive voltage, which is exactly what we want. If we plug them in the wrong way, they'll give us a negative voltage, which is not what we want. If we look at these two numbers, we can see that we're going to want to start with the positive number. We'll do that one first, 0.96 volts. And then from that, we're going to subtract the smaller number, negative 0.763. And this is the formula that you're going to take always. Bigger number minus the smaller number. That's how you're going to end up with a positive voltage. So the voltage for the cell is 1.723. And then, like I said, that's, that's the last thing that Alex asks you to do, 1.7273 to two significant figures. And yes, obviously, you have enough information to calculate the voltage because we just did it. Now, why is that the first thing that we should do? Doing this helps us figure out which reaction is taking place at the cathode and which one is taking place at the anode. And honestly, I don't know an easier way to do it. If we get these numbers plugged into this equation in the right order so that we get a positive voltage, that's also at the same time letting us know that the reaction with 0.96 volts, which is this reaction right here, this is the reaction that's taking place at the cathode. And our other reaction with the point negative 0.763 volts, this is the reaction that's taking place at the anode. We know our trick, red cat, and that red cat trick reminds us that the cathode is where the reduction takes place and the anode is where the oxidation takes place. And we're going to use all of these tricks together. So here we want to write the reaction that's happening at the cathode. We've already decided it's this reaction right here. And the cathode reaction is a reduction reaction because red cat reduction involves gaining electrons. Our reactants are adding with electrons. So this reaction, exactly the way that it's shown in this Alex problem, this is the reaction that's taking place at the cathode. When you write this equation into this box, make sure that you're including the states. That's really important. Alex needs you to not leave them out. Second thing it's asking us is to write the equation that's taking place at the anode. So this reaction is our anode reaction, but at the anode, this is an oxidation reaction, and oxidation is the loss of electrons. This is currently written as a reduction where electrons are being gained. So we need to take this reaction because it's happening at the anode and it's an oxidation, and we just need to turn it around. Just write the whole entire thing backwards. Now it is an oxidation reaction. Then uh, last, we need to write an overall equation. So that means we're going to take these two half reactions and combine them together the same way that you would do when you're balancing an equation. Now, right now, when, when we're balancing an equation, we need to make sure we have the same number of electrons in both of these half reactions. And right now we don't. We have two electrons in one and three electrons in the other, which means that we're going to need to multiply all of the stoichiometric coefficients until we get the same number of electrons for each. I do want to point out that this equation, exactly the way that it's written, is correct for this Alex problem. And same with this down here. Even though we are going to have to change the coefficients in order to combine them and answer this question, we don't need to have those coefficients changed for this part of the problem or for this part of the problem. I'm going to do that coefficient changing in a different color. Um, for the first half reaction, in order to get six electrons, I'm going to multiply all of my stoichiometric coefficients by two. So I'm multiplying everything by two. 
And then for my second half reaction, I'm going to multiply all of the stoichiometric coefficients by three so that I can get six electrons. And now these are ready to combine. I have, for my first reaction, I have two NO3 aqueous and eight H plus aqueous. And I'm not going to write down the six electrons because the six electrons will just completely cancel out. And I also have three zinc solid. And that's going to produce my products, two NO gas plus four H2O liquid plus three zinc two plus aqueous. And then what I'm going to do, just so that there isn't any confusion, for Alex, we can erase back all of the things that I did in red and blue because we don't need to have the two equations balanced with respect to each other when they're being put into Alex. Right there. So there is the answer to this question.